All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Now, last time we finished up the two speed gearbox and fitted it to the chassis. So, this week we're on to the front axle. Let's see how far we can get. The first job on the list is to open up bag three. We'll also need a couple of bits that were left over from bag two. We've got quite a few plastic bits. The axles are made up of lots of small parts rather than just two halves. It's going to be a bit more labour intensive than usual, but it should make for a funky looking axle. Along with all the black plastic, we've also got a pair of brake discs and calipers. A nice inclusion. I've read that the hexes built into the discs can be a bit of a problem though. The material isn't ideal and the drive pins munch the hexes. In the first of the sub bags, we've got the metal parts. There's lots of nicely finished links in that lovely brown anodizing. A pair of proper looking CVs. I've not heard of many problems with them. They should last a lot better than the plastic universals that some trucks come with. There's a short turnbuckle, probably to go between the steering servo and hub. You should recognize these from the last video. Another set of bits for the drive shaft that go between the transfer box and the axle. Lastly, there's the ring and pinion gear along with the locker. They're all steel and feel like very high quality material. Also, the teeth are helical rather than straight cut. It should make them a little bit stronger, but a bit more draggy. There's one more small bag, and this one has all the small metal parts in. As usual, we'll separate them out into pots so they're easier to find what we need. First, we've got a nice handful of sealed bearings, quite a few for an axle. Next, we'll separate all the ball ends, as there's quite a lot of them. We've got the steering as well as all the suspension links to do. That just leaves the screws, and I think we're going to separate the sub M3 size ones and put the rest in the last pot. That should make things a lot easier when we're hunting for the right screws. Okay, page nine then. Let's collect up all the parts. You'll need the locker along with the ring and pinion. Interestingly, the pinion isn't listed on the side, but it is in the diagram at the top right. Next is the inner of the drive shaft. It's got splines on both ends and kind of floats between the shafts on the transfer box and the axle. And speaking of the shafts, we're going to need another 34 mm one. There's the three parts of the drive shaft joint, the plastic outer and the two metal inner parts. To go with those bits, we'll also need the small roller part, which was hiding in one of the screw pots. So we can attach it to the axle. We'll need an M4 by 12 screw pin. We've got four bearings, two 8 by 14 by 4s and two 5 by 10 by 4s. There's a single M3 by 8 countersunk screw, three M3 by 6 countersunk, a 9.8 millimeter pin, and lastly for the small parts, 10 M1.6 by 5s. For the large parts, all we need is a diff case and the cover. The only prep work they need is careful removal of any nubs left over from the parts trees. They're easy to take down with a nice sharp knife. Right, first step is to install the pinion and its bearings. We'll start by pressing one of the 5x10x4 bearings into its hole on the inside of the diff case. It should go in without any fuss as long as you get it in straight. We'll follow the bearing with the pinion. Now, not for lubrication, but just to try and seal the shaft a bit better, I'm going to add some grease. It'll sit in the void between the bearings. It's only a half measure really, as the rest of the gearbox is still going to leak, but it'll save having to pop the bearings out if we decide to seal it later. The second bearing, of course, slides over the shaft. Any excess grease should ooze out, which we'll need a quick wipe. Next, we've got the drive shaft. And it's exactly the same as the ones we put together for the transfer box, so I won't go into extreme detail. But there was one interesting thing that I probably should point out. The M3x8 countersunk screw fits with no slop. Now that might not sound all that interesting if you haven't watched a previous video, where we had to cut down the screw, otherwise it bottomed out and there was a good couple of millimetres of movement between the plastic shaft and the metal joint. Perhaps the joints in bag 2 didn't have their threads properly formed. A bad batch or something. Now that the shaft's fitted, we can put together the ring gear. The locker is steel, so before we start putting the screws in, we're going to add a little smear of thread lock to the three threaded holes. You could probably get away without, but if one of the screws did come loose, there's a good chance it wouldn't do the gear teeth any good. Now all we do is pop the locker into the ring gear and install the three M3x6 countersunk screws. Initially, just loosely, taking up the slack, then nip them up all good and tight. 
All the parts are steel, so you don't have to be quite as careful as when dealing with plastic. Having said that, all they really need is a nice little tweak. On each end of the assembly, we need to slide on an 8x14x4 bearing. They should go on nice and smoothly, as long as you've got them going on nice and straight. Next, we pop the gear assembly into the diff case. It'll need a bit of pressure to push the bearings home. They'll slide smoothly all the way to the bottom. The mesh feels a little bit notchy, but it doesn't catch. It should be good enough, especially once it's been running for a while. Before we fit the diff cover, we do of course need to add a generous amount of grease. A too steep layer all the way around the ring gear should do the job. When the truck's up and running, it'll get thoroughly spread around and the excess will quickly get pushed out of the way. So within reason, a little bit extra really doesn't hurt. The last step of page nine is the diff cover. It rather neatly lines up over the case and looks rather good. But as is common with the more scale light trucks, it uses 10 very small screws to attach it. I won't make you sit through all of them, but suffice to say, do them up a little bit at a time, being really careful you don't over tighten them and strip the plastic. It would be all too easy with the M1.6 screws. The final result does look great though, so it's well worth the effort. That just leaves the inner splines for the drive shaft, which doesn't have anything to keep them in, so rather than lose it, we will just keep it off to one side. Okay, on to page 10 then, the axle tubes and the hubs. As usual, there's quite a few bits to collect up. First we have the hubs. The two parts look very similar, but they are actually a mirror image of each other. Next to the knuckles, again they look very similar to each other, but you can work out which is left and which is right from the diagram. Axle tubes next, and these two are identical to each other. Four of the little covers that keep the steering ball safe. There's two A's and two B's. Axle shafts, two 10 by 15 by 4 bearings, four 5 by 10 by 4 bearings, two 4 by 7 by 2 spacers, four countersunk washers, four of the large silver ball ends, four M3 by 10 countersunk screws, four M3 by 10 button head, eight M3 by 8 button head, and two M2.6 by 6s. Okay, the first step is to attach one of the axle tubes. We need to very carefully check the diagram and make sure we have the diff case the right way up. All the parts we're about to fit need to be on the right side. The tubes are held in place with four M2x6s. They go in fairly easily, just watch out for over tightening. They're small screws going into plastic after all. And you remember me saying you need to very carefully check the diagram? Well, I fitted the tube to the wrong side of the diff case. Luckily though, it's on the right way up at least, so I'm not going to have to take it off. In the end of the tube, we need to fit one of the 5x10x4 bearings, and it only goes in halfway rather than sitting flush. So if it's not going in all the way, don't worry, it's meant to do that. Over the bearing, we can fit the appropriate hub, which makes the half-fitting bearing make sense. They're using it to center up the hub so it can rotate, allowing the caster to be set. Quite a neat solution that doesn't end up using lots of extra parts. To clamp the hub to the axle tube, we use two of the M3x10 countersunk screws with the countersunk washers. Initially, we want them done up so we can still rotate the hub and match the angle to the diagram. The most important thing here isn't so much the actual angle, but rather that the two hubs end up matching. When it's in just the right position, nip up the two screws so the hub feels nice and solid. On the bottom of the axle tube, we need to fit the damper slash link mount. There's two different types, so we need to carefully compare them with the diagram to make sure we get the right one. To fit them, we use a pair of M3x10 screws, doing them up a little bit at a time, going from one to the other until they're just nice and snug. Next, we've got the axle shaft that should slide straight in down the tube and into the locker. It'll need a bit of a twist and a wiggle to get it to cleanly pass through. Over the joint on the shaft, we need to fit a 10x15x4 bearing which then gets pressed into the inside of the knuckle. When it's in all the way, roughly flush with the plastic, we can install two of the silver ball ends. One of them uses a 4x7x2 spacer, so check the diagram. The ball ends have a flange at the end of the threads, so all we do is do them up until they're just nice and snug. At this stage, the steering does work, but it catches a little bit. When we've got the caps installed, they're gonna keep things running nice and smooth. And remember, there's two different types with only a very subtle difference between them. 
If you trial fit one, the flat on the side of the round part should be level with the flat on the knuckle. When you've got the right one, install it with two of the M3x8s. And the same goes with the other one. Now the caps are installed, the axles and steering run very smoothly. Very nice. It's a complex build compared to most axles, but it seems to be well worth the time. It feels very solid. That of course is only half the story. We need to build up the other half of the axle. But I'm thinking you don't really want to watch all that again, so I'm just going to edit it in, like so. One complete axle, and also one complete page 10. Okay, looks like page 11 should be fairly quick, so let's work through this one too. We don't need all that many bits this time. First up we've got the brake discs and calipers, all of which I've painted. It's just a case of using a bit of plastic primer and some paint to suit. Next is the steering link, followed by the suspension links. There's a couple of different lengths, but they're all printed on the links themselves, so they're very easy to tell apart. We need loads of ball cups. There's eight of the large ones and two of the smaller ones with the angled ends. To fit them to the links, we need 10 M3 by 14 grub screws and four M2 by five screws for the calipers, two 9.8 millimeter pins, and lastly, eight metal balls. First job is to install the brake discs and the pins. Now it should be nice and straightforward, but the discs are an extremely tight fit on the axle shaft. It might be a good idea to run a drill through them just to make it a bit easier. But remember, we still want them to be a good snug fit. If they're loose, it will only make it easier for them to get stripped. With the pin in place, press the disc on all the way. If you have a spare 1.9 inch wheel and an M4 nut, you could use it to help wind it down. It needs to be in its final position or it's going to end up clashing with the caliper, which goes over the disc. The calipers get attached with two of the small screws, and not surprisingly, you need to be even more careful than usual when you're doing them up. The plastic the calipers are made of is quite soft, so it really won't take any over tightening at all. Once you have the slack taken out, stop. Same goes with the other side. Now the material might be a bit suspect, but they do look rather good. And now for the bit that everybody loves doing, building up the links. I'll just show one in the video though. They're all the same, so there's no point in covering all of them. The first step is to install a grub screw in a ball cap. The idea is to get it somewhere near halfway in. The easiest thing to do is hold up one of the uninstalled ones beside the one we're installing and see where we're at. If it's more than half a millimeter or so off, adjust until it's about right. Next, we'll use a little bit of thread lock on the end of the grub screw and screw it into the link. Same with the other end, just so they're in contact. Then the fun bit is trying to evenly tighten the ends so they match up with the diagram. The trick is to only ever tighten them, never back them off and loosen. Rinse and repeat with the other links and we can snap all the balls in. There's nothing special to do really, just pinch them with some pliers. Just make sure you get them going in from the right side. When they're all done, you should have a nice stack of links ready to fit on the next page, page 12. But that's going to wait until next time. We'll be installing the axle on the chassis too, and we'll have a look at the differences between the front and the rear axle. There's really no point in covering the entire rear axle build as it's 90% the same as the front. So as always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, leave a comment if you got something to say, and subscribe if you're not already. Bye guys!